Hashtag Rick Travels I'll be featuring Sebu Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Rick Santo Domingo of Hashtag Rick Travels. So, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for you to be updated with my latest vlog. So, without further ado, let's get started. Guys, disclaimer, all footages are taken before the COVID-19 pandemic. That is why I can freely travel with no mask. Gosh, <laughs> I miss the outside world. So, for today's episode of Hashtag Rick Travels, I'll be featuring the top tourist attraction in Cebu City, Philippines for first-timers. If you're a solo traveler, traveling with friends, with your family, or to do a DIY itinerary, this video is perfect for you. Just to give a background when I went to Cebu for the first time, by the way guys, I've been here three times already. The latest was February of this year before the lockdown or enhanced community quarantine just for a layover. One thing I like about this place that there's never a dull moment when you wanted to go in the city for example for work or to go at the beach about 20 minutes you're there and it's very convenient. If you want to go on DIY itinerary it's okay guys because you can book a grab or typically rent a private car just to go this tourist attraction that I'll be featuring. So let's find out the top tourist attraction that I've been. First on the list is the Oslob. Oslob is a tourist hotspot because of the whale shark locally known as Butending. In reality, the whale shark watching or diving experience is wrapped in controversy due to feeding these gentle giants, migrating to attract them to travelers and may interrupt their natural behavior, sometimes even harm them because of uncontrolled tourism practices. All whale shark watchers must be oriented by the rules at the briefing center before the interaction with the whale sharks. The rate per person for locals is 500 pesos or $10. And for foreigners, it's 1,000 pesos or $20. It includes snorkeling gear with boat transfers in the shore. The whale shark watching experience was surreal and beautiful like watching 7D. Second, the Kawasan Falls. Upon arrival at the foot of the Kawasan Falls, you'll walk around 10 to 15 minutes and has an entrance fee of 45 pesos or 93 cents. It's not confusing if you'll go for a DIY because there are pathways going to the falls and you'll enjoy the sceneries along the way. Kawasan Falls is known for its turquoise water. I got limited time that is why I haven't tried the canyoneering. They said that if you haven't been to Kawasan Falls, you're most probably not experiencing Cebu fully. Third on the list is the Simala Shrine. Once you get inside the church, you will see how fascinating it is. The Simala Shrine is famously known as the Castle Church, known to be miraculous. Fourth, the Magellan's Cross. It holds a big part of the history of Cebu and signified to be the propagation of the Roman Catholic faith. Fifth on the list is the Basilica Minor del Santo Niño de Cebu. It's beside the Magellan's Cross and the first church in the Philippines. It is said to be the holiest church houses on Magellan's time 
in Cebu City of the respected Flemish statuette of the Child Christ or Santo Niño. 6. The Top of Cebu It has an overlooking view of the city. The entrance fee per person is 100 pesos or $2. One thing I like about this place, it's cozy atmosphere. Better to go here at sunset. Seventh on the list is the Temple of Lega. It is dubbed as Cebu's Taj Mahal, but unlike Taj Mahal, this is a shrine. It has an entrance fee of 50 pesos or $1. The temple was built for his memories and treasures for his wife. 8. The 10,000 Roses It has a cafe. The best time to visit is late afternoon. The entrance fee is 20 pesos or 41 cents. Please feel free to like, comment, and share this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you.